What's up, family? I'm at a stoplight. I'm not going to be looking at y'all because I'm driving. Because, uh, you know, I want to practice safe habits. But I just want to say this. Don't become preoccupied with the negativity. You know, what you dwell upon, it magnifies in your mind. And if you're not careful, if you dwell upon something long enough, you can create that situation in your life. They call it self-fulfilling prophecies. So be very mindful of where your thoughts are and what you're focusing upon. Because if you focus on the wrong stuff, you're going to create that negativity in your life. You actually become a walking embodiment of what's going on inside your mind and heart. In fact, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he shall be. So be very careful of what your mind focuses on. The Bible says what is whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is worthy of all praise, whatsoever is of just report. We are to think on these things. In fact, it says whatsoever is honorable. I believe honorable too. My point is the enemy is going to throw all sorts of darts at your mind, trying to contaminate your thoughts, trying to get you caught up in nonsense, sidestep, so you can sabotage yourself. But you got to take authority over your thoughts and hold every thought captive to Christ and pull down every stronghold that tries to manifest itself in your mind. A stronghold is an establishment. It's what the military would do when they would go establish themselves in a place. They would have a they would build like a tower. It was a stronghold. The enemy wants to erect these monuments in your mind, strongholds, in order to pull you away from your destiny. But in the name of Jesus, we come against that. And so I just want to say. Be mindful of what it is you're thinking about. Be mindful of what it is you're focused upon. Apostle Paul said, I think myself happy. Recognize that you have the authority of Jesus Christ and the power to command your day. Speak his word of your day. Speak his word over your circumstance. Take into consideration that you are not a victim. You are not helpless. Satan wants you to feel helpless so that he can make you feel as though you're incapable of success in your life. He wants you to dwindle to wither away in your faith and to not rise up to what you're capable of but the word of god is very clear it says whose report will you believe are you gonna believe that of the enemy or are you gonna believe god's the bible says you can do all things through christ who strengthens you and so the next time you feel overwhelmed taken aback by your situation one make sure you're taking a nap and get to sleep because if you ain't getting no rest it's really easy to be um, caught off guard and some nonsense two what is your mind focused on? Are you focused on the word of God or are you focused on what what others are saying or what, you know, the, the wrong the wrong stuff, the negativity? That's one of the reasons I don't really watch the news because there's a lot of negativity that I like to focus upon. I enjoy getting information periodically, but I stay away from stuff because some things are just so messy. They want you to get caught up in them. When you trust God, you ain't got no reason to walk around in fear. Joshua 1 9 says, be bold, be courageous. It's a whole first start. It goes like this. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed, but take up courage for the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold and be strong. That is a command and that is God's way of reassuring you. You have no reason to be afraid because I got you. The word of God says not by might, but not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I'm saying again, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. When you walk in accordance with, with the Lord in agreement with his spirit and his word, you're going to be fine. You're going to succeed. And Jesus said, they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. So quit allowing the lies of the enemy to be digested in your mind. In, instead, feast on the word of God and watch transformation take place in your mind. The Bible says, do not conform to the world or the patterns of its lust, but instead be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind takes place when you spend time feeding your mind with the word of God. When you spend time in his presence, the power of God's word, the sanctification of him, it will begin to matriculate throughout your life and you'll see transformation occur. You'll see a transition occur and you'll recognize that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Satan wants to make you feel succumbed in the darkness, but no, nah, darkness gets extinguished by the light and you are the light of the world and you have been called as salt and as light because you are called through Christ Jesus. If you are a child of God, which means you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you know him personally as Lord and Savior, you confess that with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died and was raised again from the dead, and he is the Lord of your life, you are salt and light, you are an extension of his body. So I want to come on here today and encourage you all with that, because I was reminded of that this week, to trust him and to not be stressed out. The Bible says, come to me all who are heavy laden and who are burdened, and I will give you rest. 1 Peter 5, 7, I believe, it says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. 
So right now, in the name of Jesus, I just come on behalf of you, Lord, saying thank you for the word of encouragement, the reminder. And I pray that this message would go out to those who need to hear it and that it would hit them in such a way that they would be reminded that whatever situation they're in, it is not the end. That whatever report the enemy has brought to them, it is not the report, it is not the final say. And whatever attempt or hindrance or block that the enemy has brought to try to bring them down, that it would be dwindled because their faith would rise and they would understand that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The word of God says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard. And so, Father, I thank you that you have a standard raised to protect those who are yours, God, so that no matter what opposition occurs, you are there. You are our strength. You are our refuge. You are our strong tower. You are our shield and buckler. You are our shield, Father. We give you glory. We give you glory. And we know that the word of God is the sword in the spirit. And we will speak the word of God against every situation that tries to prevent us from walking in who we are called to be. The Bible says, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Satan wants to convince us that we are incapable of success. He wants to misrepresent the word and try to make us think that we don't have the authority that you gave us when you died and rose again. Because he tricked Adam and Eve that way. But Adam did not consult the Lord. He didn't go back to the word and the commandment that he was given. I encourage you today, you go to the word. See, I'm praying, talking to. You go back to the word that God has given you. You spend time in his word. Because if you spend time in the Bible, confusion will cease. Because God will bring clarity. The Bible says, he keeps his mind on him who keeps him in perfect. He who keeps his mind on me, I'll keep in perfect peace. He says it in the third person. But, but that's what he's talking about. If you keep your mind on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. And then there's another scripture that says in Psalm 119, I believe, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God has illuminated your steps through his word. So if you're walking in the darkness, if you're walking in the shadows, if you don't understand what's going on, if you put his word into practice, he'll show you. And even if he doesn't show you the big picture, which he doesn't always do, recognize we walk by faith and not by sight. And he don't need to show you the big picture because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God wants you to trust him. God wants you to know that it's going to be okay. Just like the birds in the air, he supplies their every need. He cares so much more for us than them. So why would you be doubting him and not believing that he's got your best interest at heart? I encourage you today to get reacquainted with God's word and recognize and rest assured that it's going to be okay. It's going to be more than okay. Weeping may endure for the night, but it is joy that comes in the morning. And we want to go through these challenges so we can go from glory to glory to glory to glory. Amen. Be encouraged. Know that God has got you and he has not forgotten you. Um, I, I think about what, what is it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I'm going to sing it. It's a Fred Hammond song. Um, it's on his Spirit of David album. It's an old one. But he goes, uh, such a sweet communion as every day I see your face, knowing that you're best for me is wherever you are. I'm still waking up. It's my voice. You can speak life to me and take me up on eagle's wings. And all day long, I think on these things. I'm a little congested, my bad. They that keep their minds stayed on thee will be kept in perfect peace. He's telling you something right there. And I know you are able to cause all fears to cease every day can't let a day go by without keeping my mind keeping it stayed on jesus that's what you gotta do stayed on jesus with every new sunrise i gotta keep my mind you gotta meditate on him and keep the spirit deep within. Now I can keep going, but I want to just hammer that home. Where are your thoughts? Where is your mind? What are you thinking about? Because that will impact how you live your life. And guard your heart above all else, for it determines the courses in life you take. How do you guard your heart? By keeping your heart fixated on the word of God. By making sure you don't allow anything to enter into your mind, through your ears, through your eyes, through the company you keep, 
you better separate yourself. Be ye set apart. It says, come out from among them. What do righteousness and unrighteousness have in common? Nothing. Come out from among them. So anyway, I got to go. I'm on my way to work. But if there's anybody watching, which I believe there will be, this is faith in action. Put it in action. I would say this, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your heart and believe, with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died and that God the Father brought him back from the dead, you will be saved from the penalty of your sins. What do I mean by that? We were all born in sin. We were all headed in the direction away from the Lord, but God gave us a way out. He said, I love you too much to let you go down this road of destruction without giving you a way out. And that is through his son, Jesus Christ. He sent his son on the earth as a man so that he could die and rise again. He never he never sinned. He, ne he lived a perfect life, even though he was tempted to sin just like us. And he never sinned. And as a result, he became the perfect sacrifice for us. And if you put your faith in him, then his righteousness, because he was a righteous man, a righteous God and righteous man, his righteousness will become your own and you will be cleansed and purified and your sins will have been made atonement for because he is the righteous sacrifice to atone for what you've done, for all the sins we've done. And hence, that's why he went on that cross and died. And he came back three days later offering new life. So if you want to know him, then just repeat after me. Now, let me say this. You ain't going to be liked sometimes. You're going to be hated. People are going to dislike you because you are a child of God. But nevertheless, you are blessed, even if they don't like you. So if you don't, if you want to hear, repeat this, just repeat after me. If you want to know him, excuse me, Lord Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe God the Father raised you back from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. Now, I encourage you. Know this. Doing this, you're going to heaven. You're not going to hell. There's a name. There's your name is written in the book of life. There's a celebration in heaven because you've crossed from death to life. There will be times where you're not liked because you love Jesus, but that's okay. That's part of the walk. He said the student is not greater than the teacher. He said if they called him the prince of demons and he's the son of God, they're going to call us by worse names. Get into a Bible-based church. Watch God transform your life. Get baptized in water because you got to be born again of water and spirit. And get in the word because you got to meditate on him. Meditate on him and keep the spirit deep within. All right, I got to go. Much love. Peace.